Video games are amazing, but one of the things that can truly ruin the experience is having a bad controller. Today, we look at some of the absolute worst from our collection. Hi, I'm Jacob with Video Game Retrospective, and today we're looking at the five worst controllers we own. And the we own part's important because we don't own every controller in existence, so if there's a controller that you think is worse than the ones we have, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to add them to my very masochistic collection. Also, I'm sorry if a controller you grew up with ends up on this list. This is just my personal opinion, but I do think these five controllers are particularly awful. So let's get into it. Number five, this random <laughs> blank Genesis controller. Okay, so this is just a random generic Genesis controller, but it's one that shipped with a Genesis flashback console. So I think it's worthy enough of this list. Uh, it is completely blank, made by At Games, and it is awful. It does look decently like a normal, traditional six-button Genesis controller, but it couldn't be further from the real thing. I'm actually not the biggest fan of the Genesis controllers. I do think they're just okay. But this, on the other hand, is against the Geneva Conventions. The buttons are super cheap feeling with an extremely unsmooth press, and the corners of the D-pad are sharp. Using it for more than a minute or two will leave your fingers sore. Trying to do a fireball in Street Fighter will likely require stitches. Number 4, the Suncom Starfighter Joystick. This is the Starfighter Joystick made by Suncom Technologies. It's an aftermarket Atari 2600 controller, and it is really bad. The official 2600 controller is already known for being quite stiff, but this takes it to a whole new level. The stick is fully rounded, making it rather awkward to hold, and its actuation is pitiful. You get maybe an inch of movement from fully left to fully right. The fire button is also ridiculously tiny. Number three, the Atari 5200 controller. I've talked in depth about the Atari 5200 controller in our two-part series covering the console's flaws. It's a controller so bad it may have single-handedly killed the console it shipped with. Sure, it was ambitious, offering a full analog joystick a good 14 years before that was commonplace, but it was over-ambitious. It just doesn't feel good. And that's not even factoring in the fact that 99.9% .9 of these controllers are now broken because they are made with extremely cheap parts. Number two, the Atari track and field controller. What's worse than a terrible controller you can use for tons of different games? How about an awful controller you can only use for one? I unboxed this Atari track and field controller back when I opened every single Atari Soft game published for the Apple II. It's awful. The problem is twofold. First, the buttons are the single worst buttons I have ever come across on a controller, despite looking the part. They have absolutely no click at all and are extremely mushy, which is a problem when you are meant to mash them repeatedly to play. The other issue is layout. You have your left and right buttons, which you have to alternately mash, and then your jump button to jump over hurdles. The problem is there's absolutely no way to reach the jump button while pressing the other two buttons. You have to have some freaky mutated hand in order to have access to all three at the same time. It's also clearly a controller designed to be laid flat on the table as you play, but with the fact that it's extremely light, you're going to have to tape it down or it's going to move all over the place. Overall, Terrible. Would not use. Number one, the Tandy Deluxe Joystick. Tandy was Radio Shack's in-house brand for producing computers and computer accessories. This is one of them, the Tandy <coughs> Deluxe Joystick. No, it's not missing a piece. That's actually how the stick looks. So there's the obvious issue of having to control your games with a needle, but also the travel on this thing is ridiculously high. It goes all the way fully pressed down on the left side to all the way fully pressed down on the right side, giving it a huge, huge degree of movement that it just doesn't need. 
There are also switches on the bottom to switch the joystick from a centering mode to fully non-centering. That's right, you have the option to turn a bad joystick even worse. Well, that's my list for the top five worst controllers that we own. Do you have any amazingly bad controllers that you have experience with? Let me know in the comments down below, or you can tell me all about them in our Discord server, uh, where there are tons of nerds that you can talk about with any retro gaming topic. It's a good time. While you're at it, why don't you check out our Patreon, where you can support us and get some nice perks for yourself. If you'd like to continue your journey of looking at terrible, terrible accessories on our tech channel where we cover retro computers, we did a video on the top five worst keyboards we own. That's a good time, so definitely check that out. And I'll see you guys next time.